An all-in-one bi-quad active analog filter implemented using three ideal op amps shown here. Reason we say all-in-one because with the transfer function that looks like this, it can implement at the same time depending on the parameters, low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and even all pass filter. So how is this possible? Basically, it's a programmable filter that can realize any type of filter we like. It's bi-quad or bi-quadrature because the transfer function in this domain is a ratio of two second-order polynomials, as you can see, a polynomial second-order in numerator and a polynomial second-order in denominator. If you uh, bear with me, I'm going to show you a quick way to find this transfer function and prove that this is an all-in-one bi-quad. Uh, it looks like a difficult circuit, but it is not actually if you do it right, but uh, it's involved because um, it has three feedbacks. You can see that there is a straightforward path from V in to the output, but then from output, you can see that there is a route back to input. And at the same time, not only that, you can see that from input, there is a route back via this route, and there is also a feedback via this route. So effectively, we are dealing with at least uh, three feedback path, paths that are active in the circuit, so make it a little bit involved, but there is a quick route. Okay, so let's focus uh, to just quickly uh, do this, uh, just let's focus on this simple approach. So I am going to consider this portion of the circuit, this portion. And uh, yeah, I'm going to just assume, uh, make the assumption that this is just Z1, a parallel of MC and R over K. We have four potential meters, so that's one potential meter. And I'm going to consider that as Z2 and Z1. So from perspective of op amp number one, with the Z1, Z2, what we have effectively is a simple uh, scenario of inverting amplification this way. So we have op amp one, uh, positive terminal grounded, negative terminal going to output via Z2, and then via Z1, we are getting connected to Vn. Okay, so here is Vn. And then at the same time, there is Vx here. So Vx is via R. So via R, we are connected to, to Vx. So effectively, we have an inverting amplification scenario. So it's an inverting amplifier, very simple. And an inverting amplifier, we know that with the ideal op amp and linear region of operation and virtual short valid, here is zero at the positive terminal. So as long as virtual short is valid, then zero is a negative terminal. Because of that, we know we can simply write V out is just negative Z2 over Z1 times Vn. So negative Z2 over Z1 times Vn. And we can write uh, negative Z2 over R times Vx. So negative Z2 over R times Vx. Okay, so this is super important. I'm going to use it. Equation one. Now, the same thing can be done for uh, the two other op amp. So I'm talking about, say, op amp number two and op amp number three. So Vx is the outcome of op amp number three. But what are the contributions? So Vn shows up here. So via this route, Vn contributes. Also, Vn shows up here, and via this route, it contributes. Also, V out via this route contributes. So effectively, uh, for Vx, what we have is as simple as this. So um, I'm going to use uh, just this color so that you can see. What we have is we have op amp 3. So we have op amp 3. At the output, we have Vx. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about the output Vx that is shown here. Then uh, at the negative terminal of op amp 3, we have a resistor R that is going to its output. So a resistor R that is going to its output. And uh, then at the input, we have a couple of things. So via potentiometer R over beta, we are connected to Vn, as you can see. Uh, then via resistor R, we are connected to via resistor R, we are connected to op amp 2. So that's op amp 2. And then in op amp 2, uh, the positive terminal grounded, of course. So negative terminal, you can see that we have cap C between negative terminal. So cap C. And uh, finally, uh, what we have is we have 
uh, register R going to be out. So register R going to be out. And then we have register uh, the potential meter R over alpha. So we have R over alpha, and that's going to V in. Okay, so we have a cascade of um, two inverting amplifiers. This is cascade of two in inver in inverting amplifiers, as simple as that. So what I can write, Vx is equal to negative R over R over beta, which means beta, uh, negative beta. So negative beta, uh, let me just write it so that it's not forgotten. Negative R over R over beta times Vn. And then we have negative R, o, R over R times uh, the gain of this stage, which is, uh, so the impedance of this cap is 1 over Cs. So negative 1 over Cs divided by R times V out. So negative 1 over Cs divided by R times V out. And then negative 1 over Cs again. So uh, negative 1 over, uh, 1 over Cs divided by R over alpha times V in. Okay, so in conclusion, I can write Vx is negative beta V in, and uh, negative R over R is negative 1, and then we have minus minus, so it becomes plus, plus 1 over RCS, V out, and then we have uh, minus minus, so plus alpha over RCS times V in. Let's refer to this one as equation uh, number two. Okay, so now I'm going to substitute Vx using equation two into equation one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to do equation, combining equation one and two, what I get is V out is um, by the way, let's do one further step here. So multiply both sides of equation 1 with z2 over r. So we get with r over z2. So we get r over z2 v out is uh, minus uh, r over z1 vn minus vx. So let's name this the equation 1. This is easier. Okay, so... Um, Equation 1, I'm going to substitute for Vx using equation 2. So I end up with, I end up with this simple outcome that um, R over Z2 V out equal to minus R minus R over Z1 V in. And we have negative Vx. So be careful. We have negative Vx. So what happens? It becomes plus beta V in minus 1 over RCS V out here. And uh, we have minus alpha over RCS V in. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure I'm not missing something. Uh, it's super important to just make sure that I am not making an error here. Okay, so um, as a result, what happens is, um, just making sure I'm on the right page, so we get um, negative Vx, and we have negative beta V in, so it becomes plus beta V in, and then what we have is, okay, so great, um, yes, okay, so let's move on. Uh, let's move this negative out, uh, V out over RCS to this side, so we have Therefore, what we get is uh, R over Z2 uh, and then plus 1 over RCS times V out is equal to uh, negative V in times R over Z1 here. So I factor that negative V in and then R over Z1 remained. And then we have plus... Um, alpha over RCS and negative beta. Okay, so the last step I need to do is just V out over Vn is minus. So be careful, be careful of this minus that I factored out 
it's super important. And uh, then it become R over Z1 plus alpha over RCS minus beta. And denominator is just this guy. So um, denominator is simply R over Z2 uh, plus 1 over RCS. We are almost there. So this seemingly difficult circuit, uh, we are almost at the end point in respect to finding transfer function because we already found the transfer function. Just now we need to substitute for Z1 and Z2. Well, take a look at Z1 here. So it's MC in parallel with RK. So obviously uh, impedance uh, of, of cap capacitor MC is 1 over MCS. So when you do the parallel with RK, you end up with, uh, R so, so you end up with uh, Z1 equal to, uh, just to uh, summarize what you're going to get, you're going to get uh, R over K divided by uh, 1 plus R over K MCS. Okay, so uh, the nice thing is what I need to do is R over Z1 effectively. So when you look at what you, we have in numerator, R over K, um, just making sure that it's visible. Okay, so uh, it's then R over Z1 is very simple. So R over Z1 effectively become, uh, let me put it here. So R over Z1 effectively become, becomes this. Um, it becomes 1 plus, um, so let me put it here. It's as simple as K times 1 plus R over K. Um, or if you want to further simplify it, let's put it this way. It become K plus R MCS. That's it. Uh, and uh, the same thing for R over Z2. So we have also um, R over Z2 here. There you go. R over Z2. For R, R over Z2, for the same reason, when we have C and uh, Q are in parallel, we can just simply write um, if if you wanna if if you want me to show it, it would be for Z two effectively as if you say it is um, Q R times one over C S divided by Q R plus one over C S. So it become as simple as Q R divided by uh, one plus Q R C S. So R over Z two is as simple as one over K plus. Uh, plus RCS. Okay, um, so let me make sure I'm not missing something here. Uh, yeah, that is correct. All right, so what is the next step? Just substitute using these guys uh, you, and using equation three. So in equation three, I'm gonna substitute for R, R over Z1 and R over Z2. So V out over Vn is going to be minus, then uh, it's uh, K plus RMCS, and uh, then plus alpha over RCS, and minus beta, and denominator is um, 1 over Q plus RCS plus 1 over RCS. Okay, so um, the last thing that we just need to do is just uh, multiply numerator denominator by um, RCS and then uh, normalize to get to exactly the shape that uh, or the outcome that we have here. If you do so, then we will end up exactly proving what we uh, needed to prove. So effectively, we end up with uh, the outcome we wanted. It will become negative M S squared plus 1 over RC times K minus beta. It's already showing up, K minus beta, times S and uh, plus alpha over R square C square. Divide by, of course, S square plus 1 over Q RC, S plus 1 over R square C square. Now, one interesting thing is if we name omega naught 1 over RC, which is basically center frequency of the response of this filter, nicely the transfer function or H of S, which is V out over V in 
s becomes as simple as m s squared and then um, omega naught k minus beta s plus alpha omega naught squared divide by s squared omega naught over q s plus omega naught squared which is super helpful this one effectively is the outcome that we wanted to talk about so yes this is the one that we needed to prove but even further simplification um, give us the final outcome which is this outcome it effectively shows that this is really an all-in-one biquad analog filter it has exactly the shape of biquadrature and uh, the thing is nicely independently you can program alpha or k minus beta and also if you want m and at the same time omega naught which is just a function of uh, 1 over rc to come up with uh, any shape you want i mean you can realize the uh, effectively you can realize the body magnitude plot or the frequency response for this filter to be either um, this way like a bandpass filter this is omega and this is magnitude in db or you can realize a filter that looks like this which is then and omega naught is the center frequency which is then uh, the notch filter or band stop or you can realize a filter that uh, looks like this so uh, and omega naught is here that's a high pass filter uh, or you can realize a low pass filter that looks like this so that would be a low pass filter so any type of filter uh, of second order nature can be realized using this all-in-one by quad analog filter and the nice thing is we have independent variables or parameters in terms of defining alpha k minus beta and uh, and also m in, in in this beautiful circuit i hope that this is helpful